Hey everybody, Mike here of Mike Likes with another episode for you. And as I mentioned in the last episode, I'm in the process of reviewing the Celestron Evolution 8 telescope. And in particular, for this episode, I thought I would talk about the StarSense auto alignment camera by Celestron. So this particular product connects to your telescope through one of the aux ports here. It looks like a phone cord. And what this amazing gadget does is it takes away the alignment process for your Celestron telescope. Now, for those of you who have a Celestron telescope, you know that to get it aligned, you need to either know two bright stars in the sky, or you can do a sky align where you select three bright stars and it checks your work and it builds a map of the sky. Well, this camera takes care of doing that for you. What it does is it employs a technology called plate solving, and that's basically where it maps the sky with photos and it knows where the stars are and it creates your alignment. And after using this for the better part of a week, I gotta tell you, it's uncanny how solid the alignment is. The camera itself, not much in there. It's a 1.2 megapixel, yep, just one megapixel camera and it's like 1280 by 960 resolution. It's an F2 lens, so it's a very fast lens as they say in the photography world. And those of you who are photographers know that an F2 lens lets in a lot of light. So what it sees in one megapixel, the human eye would never hope to see. And what this lets me avoid is having to do this dance where you're going from the you know um, finder to your eyepiece, checking the alignment back to the finder, to the eyepiece and so on. So StarSense takes care of that. Now, when you get the StarSense device, you go ahead and you replace the hand controller on your, on your um, telescope. So you see this is StarSense hand controller. And I'm gonna take it outside to do a quick align and demo it for you guys. But everything that's associated with your um, telescope then becomes StarSense. So, when you update the firmware, it's the StarSense firmware. It's got 40,000 objects in its database. It's an improvement over the standard Nexstar hand controller. So we're gonna go ahead and bring it outside. But before I do that, I should also mention that I cheat even more because with this telescope, I added the SkySync GPS. Now the SkySync GPS is a luxury. And I say it's a luxury because all that device does is it gets your latitude and longitude and it gets the current date and time for where you are. So I don't have to key in my latitude. I don't have to key in my longitude. If I take the telescope to a dark site, I don't have to look up whatever state park I'm in to get that. It gets it from the satellite and it uploads it to the telescope. The only thing I have to know is if it's daylight savings or standard time, because for whatever reason, the GPS satellite doesn't provide that information. But hey, that's a twice a year inconvenience. Now, when I turn on the telescope, I never have to input that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out for you. And when we're back, we'll be in the dark and I will show you how this works and how quickly it aligns. It takes about two to three minutes tops. So, hey everybody, I'm back here with you. It's a beautifully clear and crisp Ohio fall night in November. And I'm gonna go ahead and fire this up. So first I'll turn it on here and my telescope comes to life. It's going to initialize itself. It takes about 10, 15 seconds to boot up. So it's gonna talk to the StarSense camera first. Waiting for camera waiting take this guy out of the all right just that simple star sense is ready select and begin alignment we're going to do a star sense auto align for our demo however i just want to show you guys there's all sorts of ones you can do a manual align which you would use if there's trees in the way or lots of obstacles you can do that option you also have you know, auto alignments, uh, solar system align. That's like if you don't want to take pictures of the entire sky and you know where Jupiter is, you can align just to the planet and save yourself a lot of time. And then the quick align. Now, personally, I do the star sense auto align because it's the most accurate. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It's telling us to set the telescope to a, a horizontal position, which I've done. Um, that's just so it kind of knows where it started. So I'm pointing off to the, uh, what I would call the Northwest right now. So we did that, and it's already going to start doing its thing and take its pictures. And I should tell you that it's a full moon tonight, so this isn't a very good night for observing, but you'll notice that as long as there's not like 
a wash of light in your driveway, you have enough view of the sky. This system works well enough and you won't have to do it. So you can see it's already resolving its, its azimuth and alt altitude without me doing anything. It's already acquired 66 stars. It's plate solving. You get an idea how quick that is. And while it's doing that, it's taking another picture. So it multitasks better than humans. If I was doing this with a two-star line, I'd be slewing from, you know, Polaris to Vega right now. So it's taking its second alignment right now. It's taking its picture, smile. And you get a sense for how loud the evolution is. It's not bad, but it can be pretty loud. The maximum it acquires is 100 stars in a picture, I've, I've noticed, and that's plenty. It takes a really good picture with that solving again. You can see how fast it's solving. Solved. This will be the last picture that it takes. I'll give you an idea. It takes its picture. What's great is my back, my neck, they don't feel any pain right now because I'm not bending down to look at the eyepiece, look in the finder back and forth. The camera's doing everything. It's solving. Almost there. And it's solved. It's optimizing itself. Alignment complete. Enter to continue. It's ready to go. And just to prove it, we'll go to stars. We'll go to Jupiter. Now I know that Jupiter is right in the neighborhood here. It's not far. And it's already in the eyepiece. Perfectly centered. Now you can calibrate the eyepiece such that you um, you tell it where the eyepiece is relative to the StarSense camera. You only have to do that each time you change telescopes. So if I use my wide field refractor, obviously I'm pointing right at Jupiter up there and you can kind of see that little dot in the sky that it's pointing at. So if I change to my refractor, I do have to run the calibration for StarSense again because it's a smaller tube and thus the camera doesn't line up. But if I keep this uh, Celestron C8 on there, I can be aligned in two minutes and ready to go. It's really cool, especially for weeknight observation. I don't have to deal with it. I turn it on 10, 15 minutes before I want to observe with the kids and the wife and the telescope is aligned. It's a better alignment than I could ever hope to do on my own. Now, what isn't the star sense? Well, it's not an astronomy camera. For that, you would need a one-shot color or a monochrome camera that replaces where your eyepiece goes in the optical um, system. Uh, so the star sense is not going to do that. It's not a guide scope. So for astrophotography, it's not going to correct the errors in your equatorial mount. And furthermore, it's not a scope a camera that you would use to take astrophotography pictures. It serves one purpose, that is to align your telescope and takes the hassle out of it. It's a luxury item and it's priced as such, but you can get them used for under $300. And that's a lot better than paying the almost $500 that Celestron wants for this technology. Same thing goes with the GPS. New, they're close to 200 bucks use their hundred dollars two quality of life improvements that if you use your telescope as much as I do I just think it's a great idea to have it so yeah I hope you like this special episode if you notice I haven't had to turn my finder on at all it's just kind of sitting there dormant I do use it you know for straight visual astronomy that sort of thing but you don't really need to use it now when you have a star sense camera Anyways, I uh, hope you guys have a great one. If you like what I'm doing here, throw me a like, subscribe to the channel. Your support always means a lot. And I uh, hope to see you in the next episode soon. We'll uh, keep reviewing the Evolution 8 and I'll uh, keep you guys posted. Take care.